I'm just going to go over 12 by Dennis Brutus for you. So you'll see at the top, I made note that this is from the Letters to Martha collection. So just like I stated in the activity, these number poems were written while he was in prison. And he had them all together and titled it Letters to Martha so he could smuggle them out and he could have them. So number 12, as you read, is centered around music. So within the stanzas, he talks about music. So the first stanza about how music brings joy, but lack thereof adds to the sadness and loneliness, depression of being where he is in larger picture being part of the oppression of the apartheid. The second stanza talks about wanting something you can't have. So awaiting trial status was when all of these prisoners were put in to prison and they were awaiting their sentencing and they were so such in limbo and he couldn't feel anything but sadness. And then it moves on to what they were yearning for, and music um, brings joy to people. So yearning for something that's so far out of reach, and um, he was missing just the simple joys of having music. And he brings up words. Words like hunger, and he brings it up later too. That hungry for something more, hungry for that joy to get out of the loneliness and the sadness. The next stanza talks about the hungers again and how he built relationships based on these wants and these yearns um, with other people who were there waiting in limbo just how he was they just had a shared empathy and kind of a loss of hope but on the flip side they could find joy through the music and then he brings up actual music in the next stanza and discusses famous works by composers and lastly just he pulls it together by bringing back that where he is is not joyful at all, but he ends with the word joy because that's what he's choosing to focus on. So that's just basically what the poem is about. Um, so that's all in the dark purple. And then in the orange, so I tried to do different like my little notes about stuff about the poem were in the dark purple, and then the orange are more of the devices. So, uh, sadder, saddening, it's alliteration, the repetition of the S sound. Um, the deadly lack is an example of hyperbole. Uh, I move on to the second stanza um, the deprivation and the need. So he uses parallel structure here to help it feel balanced and to point out that they are of equal importance of the deprivation and the need. And the third stanza, rasping convict days, that's personification. And he brings up hunger there. And again, so he uses repetition. It shows that he's hungry for that joy that music brings and joy helps people music helps people feel joy so he's hungry for that unappreciative ears so that is also personification and more uh, hungers grew more dear is also personification so in this stanza so the repetition of hunger there again is really to point out that they just want to be able to feel joy and that music is a way to do that. And he found 
that connects you with other prisoners and talking about and uh, reminiscing about the joys of music is how one way that he just kept on going. And the next stanza, when he brings up all of these musical pieces, these musical compositions, those are all allusions to great composers and what is considered to be great music. Um, so this also helps point out and connect to the reader that he brings up different composers, so this is how we connect to the reader by saying, you can all feel it. We can all feel it, no matter who did it, where they're from, you can feel that joy, and everyone connects to music. And in the same stanza, this is just finishing out the pieces. Um, and the last one in there is also a piece of music by Bach. And it's just interesting to me that he ended this stanza with the one that had Jesus in the title. So it just makes you wonder if he was trying to point out that Jesus had these sacrifices and um, that he also went through hardships and always was looking for joy. So that was just one side note I had when I initially read this. Then the next stanza we have, um, you notice I put definitions of words that might not be used as often, and we have wisps of melody in there, and, um, oh, and then the next line, down the damp, the D sound is alliteration, and then concrete corridors, alliteration, so those are all hard sounds, so you probably chose to have those in there, because now he's flipping back to the damp gray concrete corridors, like bringing it back to the sadness, and it's just harsh and cold in prison. Uh, so anytime he mentions anything about gray and concrete, we know he's in prison because that's what he sees all around him. But he chooses to end his poem with the word joy. So that's repetition again from the beginning, and that's the overall message that he wants to leave with. So even though he's enduring the sadness and the depression, he wants to focus on joy, and one way that he does that is through music. Um, other things to point out that I have on the side, that the lines are shorter, and they're kind of fragments. So that's kind of how he felt while living in prison, these fragmented, it was a fragmented time of his life. So everything just kind of happened, um, and it's kind of broken up, and he doesn't sound too poetic about it. He doesn't, it's very straight to the point because that's how he felt his life was in prison. So if you want to add any of my notes to your notes, go ahead, and you can just do that by watching this video. And now we'll go on to read the next one from Letters to Martha, we're going to read 18.